The God Question. Again. For obvious reasons, the question of God is going to be a subject that I return to time and time again. It's a very big issue in human history and in human society. One of the things that never ceases to amaze me is the way that people who believe in God, and perhaps sometimes just barely believe in God, will drop the word God into conversation, if it's, even if it's only to say something like, God bless you. They use the word God the way they might use the word rain or gravity or water. They use the word as if they think it means something. I remember as a young teenager when we were asked to present a talk before the class, I chose as my subject why I am not a Christian. This was based largely on a reading of the book of the same name by the English philosopher Bertrand Russell. Of course, at the time, I would have been maybe 16 years old, I suppose. I wanted to stir up trouble. I wanted to be controversial. What I want to say today is not designed to stir up trouble. When people learn that I used to be an Anglican minister, one of two or sometimes both things happen. First, many people assume that I must still be religious, therefore. They find it difficult to believe that someone could abandon their faith entirely. Others want to know what brought about the change. Well, I've actually been through two, I suppose you'd call them conversion experiences. One was from non-faith to faith, and then back again, or well, so it would seem. Nothing, however, is ever as simple as it seems. Only an entire autobiography would answer these questions in anything like a satisfactory way, and even then, probably not. For that reason, I'm often reluctant to begin the conversation. Any partial answer to those questions is likely to lead to misunderstanding in one direction or another. And the same is almost certainly true of what I say here on this channel. Here today, though, I want to broach only one aspect of the issue, and that concerns the use of the word God itself. I love words. But this has to be one of the most problematic words of all time. If I'm asked, do you believe in God? The simplest and most straightforward answer is no, I don't. To a large extent, though, this is because the word God has virtually no meaning. It has no meaning because it can mean virtually anything to anyone and often does. It's as though we were to take the word table and apply it to any man-made flat-topped object with four legs or perhaps three or perhaps even just one. But we don't stop there because after all many chairs have four legs and many other man-made objects have flat tops also. So perhaps the word table might be applied to them also. But why stop at inanimate objects? After all many animals have four legs, perhaps table could apply to them also, or to animals with more or fewer legs. Eventually, as you can see, the word table loses all use usefulness. It no longer refers to anything. And so it is with the word God. It has been and is used to mean so many different things that it no longer really means anything at all. You and I could both use the word in a conversation, but it might have quite different and even contradictory meanings for each of us. We might think we were agreeing, but far from it. Conversely, I might say, I don't believe in God, while you might say, I believe in God, and we would think we were disagreeing. In fact, however, our beliefs could be identical. For example, I might believe in some kind of higher human consciousness, even a collective consciousness of some kind. <laughs> But I would not attribute the word God to that because I don't interpret it as any kind of transcendent or supernatural or ultimate reality. You might believe exactly the same thing, but be quite ready to refer to this as God. I don't believe that any meaningful conversation can be held about God. 
Certainly not without a great deal of preliminary discussion, defining our terms, understanding our personal history and so on. Perhaps that's a lifetime's worth of discussion. So it's by far simpler to say that I don't believe in God. Because the chances are that I don't believe in whatever it is that you happen to call God. Or if I do believe in that, I don't think that the word God applies to it. Look, it's entirely possible that you or some great theologian, perhaps you are one, could come up with some kind of description, definition, concept of God to which I would happily give at my assent. However, I suspect that would be so watered down that it would ultimately be empty of any meaning. And it would probably still not be the word that I thought best applied to that concept. In a very brief nutshell, what I do believe is this. That a purely mechanistic and materialistic description of reality doesn't provide an adequate description of that reality in which I believe myself to be living. I don't think it fully incorporates concepts such as art and beauty and ethics, morality. These things, I think, transcend the mere materiality of reality. But this doesn't require that I seek some explanation for this other dimension outside of reality or beyond reality. I think these things are fascinating epiphenomena or perhaps emergent properties that arise from the complexity of this reality. Does this other require my devotion? Does it provide me with any moral guidelines? Can I have a relationship with it? No. It's fascinating. It fills me with awe because it's mysterious. But I don't worship it. I owe it nothing. It doesn't love me. Basically, what this boils down to is the simple recognition that this is a weird, bloody world and that it's pretty cool. For some people, that might be exactly what they mean by God. For me, though, to call it that tells us, well, I was going to say it tells us nothing, but that isn't really the problem at all. It, it tells us far too much about it. The word carries far too many connotations and far too much baggage, most of which simply does not apply.